Most people do not see God at work in their personal lives and therefore do not know how to join Him. This Divine Appointments podcast is to encourage you in your faith to open your eyes to seeing God's hand at work. My hope and prayer is that by hearing these stories, you too will engage where God is already working and discover God's mission for your life. Welcome to my Divine Appointments podcast. I have today Senator Jennifer Branning, Mississippi State Senator, and I'm so honored to have her today. Thank you. And I have recently met her, and I look forward to talking about her life and what she's accomplished at a young age, and also that she is running for our Mississippi Supreme Court position in the Central District of Mississippi. First, I want to pause and read my theme scripture, which is Psalm 105, verses 1 through 5. And that's give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his accomplishments among the nations, sing to him, make music to him, tell about his miraculous deeds, boast about his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and the strength he gives, seek his presence continually, remember the miraculous deeds he performed his mighty acts, and the judgments he decreed. So we're going to remember your miraculous miraculous deeds he's performed in your life today. Absolutely. Uh, Tell us a little bit about Jennifer Branning, where you grew up. Thank you. First of all, thank you for having me on. I've been looking forward to this for some time now. Me too. So (laughs) I was born and raised in Neshoba County. Okay, I've been like married. Like the Mich- Neshoba County Fair. The Neshoba County Fair. <laughs> Famous. That, that starts this Friday, actually. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, starts that's this right. Friday. Excited about that. But born and raised there. Been married for 26 years this week to my husband, Chancey. We have got three amazing boys. Their ages are 21, 19, and 12. Wow. So I've got two in college and the 12-year-old. He is just living his best life. Oh, at this so point. sweet. But we, you know, I've been practicing law for about 20 years now in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. I've been serving in the Senate for uh, nine years now. So I'm in my third term in the Mississippi Senate where I chair the Highways and Transportation Committee. So That's I've got great. a few things going on. And as a few you, things. Yeah. <laughs> as you mentioned, I'm also a candidate for the Mississippi Supreme Court. So... Going back to growing up years, you mm-hmm. you went to where where for high school? Leak Academy. Leak Academy. Yes, class of 1997, all right. to be exact. So now you know how young she is. That's right. And <laughs> she's accomplished all of this. Yep. And then college was? Mississippi State University. And so I was in the business administration program there and attended the MBA program. And in that program, I took a business law class and that's absolutely when the light bulb went off and I said, I've got to go to law school. I felt like that was my calling. I loved every aspect about the law. From there, I applied to Mississippi College and in 2004, I graduated from there. Why law school? What was the light bulb? <laughs> so in the MBA program, the business law class I took, I was just mesmerized by the study of law. Mm. I just, it made sense to me and it just sort of, I guess, ignited a passion, if you will. You know, I've told my boys, uh, in times past, they're both, they're all trying to, to decide on career paths. You need to love what you do. Right. You need to be passionate about what you do to be really good at it. Mm-hmm. So that's that was sort of my experience. Were they, uh, you met Chancey at what, where were you when I you was met in him? high school, a senior <laughs> okay. in high school when we met. He was in college at East Central Community College. Oh, yep. older man. I Three years older. Okay. He's three years my elder, <laughs> and I do remind him of that quite frequently. Well, I told Jennifer that we are in the same club, the Three Boys Club. Right. And my our Myers are similar ages. I have 22, excuse me, 23, 20, and 17. Yeah. So we're close in age. So what does that mean for what we have? I, I tell people I live in a fraternity house because right. <laughs> there's just boys, there are boys everywhere all the time at my house. Right. Well, it's not just my three sons. It's the, all of their friends. They exactly. come over and I want them to come. I Me too. definitely want my house to be the hangout. I know where they are Absolutely. and what they're doing. And I'm happy about that. And your pantry's empty. My pa- well, it's, <laughs> yes, I have to work very hard to keep stuff in the pantry for sure. So yes. high school sweethearts. Yes. And then did you both go to Mississippi State? 
No, I attended Mississippi State. At that time, Chancey, he finished at community college, mm-hmm. and then he went into the workforce. And what does time. he do? So at when we first started out, he was a welder oh, yeah. at Taylor's Machine Works. That's what he did there. And he did he was a, a machinist also. But now he's a real estate broker and works with me in the law practice. I do a lot of real estate and business transactional work. So okay. we work together every every single day. That's great. So happy in Philadelphia for all these years. Yes. What made you pursue being a state senator? Well, you know, for the first few years of my law practice being, you know, in Philadelphia, I kept up with politics. I was not just deeply entrenched in it, but like a lot of other people, I had my list of things that I wanted to see changed in our state. Mm-hmm. And so I'm the type of person, instead of just complaining about that, I wanted to put action behind that and do my part mm. to make the state better. And so in District 18, Giles Ward was the senator at that time, and he announced that he would not be seeking re-election. I believe this was 2014 when he announced that. And I had a group of business people from Philadelphia, actually they were clients of mine in the law practice, that approached me and said, would you consider doing this? At first I said, no, I I can't see myself doing that. I'm too busy. I'm a mom. I run a law practice. But I prayed about it and I felt like the timing was right. Wow. And so in 2015, I qualified to run for the Mississippi Senate. My youngest child was three years old. Wow. <laughs> the other boys were, let me see if I can get my math right, sick, I'm um, sorry, nine and 11 mm-hmm. were the older boys. And we hit the campaign trail. And it was it's just been a phenomenal experience since that time. So the first election, there were four people in the race. And the two election cycles since that time, I've been unopposed in the Senate. So it's just been a tremendous opportunity. So obviously a family decision. Your husband's very supportive. He is supportive, but I will have to say (laughs) when this opportunity came up for the Supreme Court, we're used to three counties in District 18 for the Senate. And that's a lot. And we, that's, you know, it takes all of us to make that happen. He said, okay, how many counties in the Supreme Court district? I said, 22. 22. And I thought he might faint <laughs> for a moment, but he's good now. He's excited and he's he's right along beside me working hard. And he has been the whole time because yes. you work in the law and he does the real estate right. part of it. And, and now he's been in, on that's, these campaign trails. That's and, right. Um, supporting you at home? He does support me at home. It's a group effort. It just depends on what day of the week it is, Mm -hmm. what my travel schedule is like. Some days he will take the supper duty, if you will, and other days I do it. I use a crock pot on a frequent (laughs) basis, but we work very well together. He brings some of my work home at night from the law practice, things that I that I need to pay attention to. So it, you know, it's work. I get this question a lot, working outside the home. How do you balance all of that? Yeah. How do you balance family? And obviously your work is not just in Philadelphia, but right. in the state capitol. That, that's a great question. <laughs> you know, you opened with scripture and with the prayer. We prayed together before we got on. The word of God talks a lot about balance just in life in general. And so I think it it takes wisdom to know how to balance all of this stuff. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying I'm a pro and I do it right all the time. But when I get overwhelmed, I just learn to pray. Say, God, help me get things even back out. And we just make sure we make family time top priority. Mm-hmm. On Sundays after church, the boys know I expect them and whatever friends they choose to bring to be around my dinner table. That's Family lunch. time, it is. It's, <laughs> to me, that's um, a very important thing that we try to do. During the week, we do that when we can, but during campaign time, it's not nearly as as easy or as frequent, but I, we make it priority on the weekends for sure. And I think that's the key, don't you, is priority, making things a priority. And I know young mothers will ask me, well, am I? are my kids going to miss out if I am not there for every single time, but their dad gets to be a part of that. And and you share those times and you balance those times. Right. For the things that I've had to miss for the boys, and really I can count on one hand the number of times I've missed an event for them Mm -hmm. just because I do make it priority. You know, I explain to them where I am and why and make sure that I I love on them and and Mm -hmm. make sure I 
let them know how proud I am, but they, they understand, they seem to understand, but thankfully I've, I've, I've been able to be a very uh, present mother for them. Obviously, faith is important to you and yes. quite evident. Um, how has this impacted your career? I think that you you talked about balance just a few minutes ago. There would be no way that I could do any of these things I do without God's help. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, wisdom and God-given wisdom, and I'm not saying I have that all the time, but certainly I seek for it, is something that... Uh, I have to have to do all that I do. Mm-hmm. Certainly, I have to have it. And, you know, I, I'm very patriotic. I love my country. I love my state. And when we recite the Pledge of Allegiance, we talk about one nation under God. Mm-hmm. And I'm very thankful to live in a nation where we can worship freely, talk about God, we have Bible studies and do all the things. And I think that we as Americans sometimes get used to that. Mm-hmm. We become complacent. All you have to do is travel to other countries to realize we really are blessed people. Mm-hmm. So... I think that in order for me to show my appreciation for where I am and where I get to live, finding a way to serve public service, I think is one of the reasons I'm called to that. I want to make sure I'm giving back and doing my part because I'm so thankful for what we do have here. So as a state senator, what are some key things that were very important to you and that you really emphasized in your work there? Well, I think generally, you know, making sure that we've done what we could do to protect our God-given fundamental rights, you know, and I feel like government should stay in its place Mm -hmm. and not be too overreaching. Mm -hmm. I've certainly spent time looking for ways to cut red tape when I could. Right now, I'm chairing the Highways and Transportation Committee in the Senate, which is a huge committee with a lot of responsibility, and I appreciate the Lieutenant Governor for trusting me. Mm -hmm. I think that maybe he saw some leadership capabilities in me when he asked me to, to put me in that role. But just for an example, this last year, we passed a $1.4 billion budget in the state of Mississippi for transportation. And why that matters is that's a core function of government. That's something government's supposed to be taking Mm, care of is our infrastructure. And we won't have economic development if we don't have a good infrastructure system. So that's one thing I've been proud over the last several years to really make some, I, I believe, some strides in that regard. I'm told that you were chosen because you are a go-getter and that yeah. they are, they want someone who's going to get things done and mm. that you have delivered on that. Thank <laughs> you. I've certainly tried. It's been a group effort, too. We've got a great leadership team um, that deals with transportation issues, mm-hmm. and I'm happy to be just one of those members. So we have a big election coming up November 5th, yes. and we'll start to hear more and more about this election uh, so 22 counties, we said that you're running to lead. Right. And while candidates for Supreme Court cannot petition for any giving, I would invite you to join me in supporting Senator Branning um, and go to her website, jenniferbranning.com. Yes. And read more about her and join me in supporting her uh, for this role. But you're, you'll are you have four other uh, candidates running against you. That's right. There are five people in the race, mm-hmm. but I'm the first one on the ballot. That's right. So. We hope that she will get the 51% to take that position. Yes. Uh, so why the Supreme Court? What what made you want to take that next step? Well, thank you for asking that question. And I wish I had a picture of my boys to show, but Aww. you know, they're the reason I got in in public service to begin with, looking at the future of our state. I, mm-hmm. I've always wanted to do my part to make Mississippi the best place it can be to live so they'll have a best spot to live, work, and raise their families right here next to their mom. Mm-hmm. And so for three terms, I've been able to do that. But I see a need on the court. I see a need on the court for someone to to be a constitutional conservative. And what that means is following the law just as it's written, being willing to call balls and strikes. Mm -hmm. Nothing more and nothing less. That's what we've got to have in order for our entire system to work the way it's supposed to. So that's why I'm running. That's great. Of course, I I know personally uh, Justice Kenny Griffiths. Yes. And his seat is not being contested, correct? He's not up for election this time. This time. And then um, Governor Waller's son, Justice Waller, who's retired now, Bill Waller. Right. But um, 
it seems like how we have several positions coming open this this season. Is that right? In several. the central district, the position I'm running for is the only one that will be on the ballot. Okay. So there are nine Supreme Court justices, three from each of the districts. There's a northern district, central and southern. And so they're rotated on purpose so that we don't have an entirely new court at one time. At one time. That's Got right. You. Yes. So only only this spot and this is the person. So you don't have to go anywhere else to Thank you. find another person. Thank you. Uh, but look forward to really that's what it should be a constitute someone who interprets the contra- a constitutional law. Right. You know, and you'll see if you're on Facebook, you'll see an ad that that we put out today legislation does not belong in the courtroom. That right. belongs at the Capitol. I know how that works because I've been I on have, that side. I've been on that side. But, you know, the court is designed in such a way that the justices are there just to interpret the law the way it's written. Nothing more, nothing less. So your long-term goals in life? Well, it depends on uh, where God leads me, mm-hmm. I suppose. But mm-hmm. I think what we're focused on right now, ladies are focused, is this next step for the court. So I'm very excited about the opportunity. And you have support from the boys at home? All I the do. Boys. <laughs> of course, they're still going to be calling me later to say, Mom, what's for dinner? Right. They do that, exactly. but they're very supportive. They are. Yes. Exactly. And in closing, what is your favorite scripture? Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And I know that may seem a little bit generic and that applies to everything, but that's something that I look to every single day. And what is important to me in that scripture, it says all things. And so what that tells me, God cares about everything we're doing and everything that we're going through. It doesn't matter how small it may seem. If it's important to us, it's important to God. Mm, Amen. Well, thank you, Jennifer Branning. And I hope you'll join us in supporting her for Supreme Court in Mississippi. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching this episode. Now you engage where God is at work. Please make sure to like and subscribe so you will be notified of future episodes.